Well, there we go. We are finally live, and I am simply trying to get a large enough image here to know what we are doing for you. All right, there we go. And yes, it gets smaller every week, it would appear. I keep um, trying to create in ways that are small enough uh, for you to do at home, and at the same time, um, yeah, at the same time, large enough to see on a screen. So as you can see, we're pretty tiny this week, but I wanted to make sure that you could hear me. So please let me know how the volume is for you. I'm trying to just pick this up on my own feed because we started a little bit late. I had everything loaded and then I couldn't start live for some reason. So here we go. We're going to talk about angels a bit. These pieces behind here that you can see in the background I created um, through the week so that you could get, you know, get a little bit of an idea um, what you might be able to create on if you were doing this in your home. Um, these were old paintings actually that I had. I'll show you this one and then I'll, we'll, uh, we'll come back to it later maybe. This is just using some uh, red paint that I had here already uh, from another project and then I created I used gold, so often I don't use metallics on in uh, traditional painting, although if you're Gustav Klimt, you have used them repeatedly for your whole life. But for me, I try to uh, do most traditional paintings in re um, regular color. You'll see me punch them up sometimes with fluorescent colors, and I'll talk to you about that another day. But we're going to... Um, see how far we get on these angels. This particular piece I set up and started. I'm going to show you just with a, a piece of um, regular canvas. Maybe we'll just grab this one here. What you might do. What I've tried to do um, with these pieces is to create uh, an image, a sense of an angel if you like, or people actually all lined up. So if you have a piece, you can just take your, your white canvas. Um, maybe I'll grab a white one so you can see what I'm talking about on just a white piece, and then we can talk about how to use colors. Right? So here's a straight white canvas. Sometimes we talked about the rule of thirds, right, before. So even with something like this, you can think about that if you like, if you want to put anchor one image here. Angelic forms traditionally through history, they are, you know, cherub, little cherubs floating around, or sometimes large, um, uh, almost uh, somewhat feminine figures as in as much as they have thin, thin lines, flowing wings, and maybe that isn't even particularly feminine, but sometimes they've been made feminine. Um, other times people will say they, you know, that if who talk about angels, will say they're giant. Like I've had people approach me when I've been painting and said, I see these massive angels standing behind you. They're huge. And I go, well, that's interesting. I don't see them. Um, but other people tell me they do. And I take them at their word. I also I'm trying to learn about the angelic realm, if you like, because I do believe it's real. For those of you who don't believe it's real, that's fine. Um, you know, no, I'm, it's not a debate for me. I simply want to show you how to use um, angel kind of forms as a representation of blessing or care. And in this case, I've been working on a large panel, um, which maybe in the future weeks I'll start doing some larger canvases because these are really hard to film for you. But um, for this week, I wanted to again keep try to try to work small so that you can do this at home and, and see how simple it could be. And then you can work on a larger scale because scale does change the level of difficulty. Okay, so with that in mind, here I have um, three forms. When I'm trying to create what I call these walls of angels, I do it as a symbol of frontline workers right now, um, standing, if you like, just positioned. Now, in this case, because I have a rule of thirds, I could have, actually, this is kind of interesting, almost just two heads and two bodies. I've just swirled into place there. Now, 
that would be a totally symmetrical piece in some ways, so wouldn't be how I normally would, would create. Um, but if I see, and in my work, what I've seen, or what I've really spoken as blessings right now over people in, in community and frontline workers trying to keep people alive these days, I have done a symbol of a person, if you like, standing with an angelic sense of a, an angel behind them. Now, what does that do for me? Well, literally today, I received word that my sister's nursing home was in outbreak again. And yes, I have a sister who lives in a nursing home. And there's another COVID outbreak and they've declared the whole um, nursing home. And it's like a small town, actually. It's big enough to be a small town in and of itself. So I've been working on this painting for them as a gift to say thank you with just this wall of ordinary people and some sense of the ethereal realm because for me people have been giving up their lives and I know many people have passed away and we haven't been able to keep everyone alive but people have also been giving up their lives keeping our loved ones alive and keeping them safe. I just took a sip of my water so cheers for those of you who are drinking your tea um, I believe in you and I believe there is great hope in us communicating together and hanging out together even like this week by week. I wanted to make sure I was doing something accessible for people that they could you know get a sense of, of beauty and hope and connection. So what I try to do is I draw if you like a, just a shape there's three shapes here more graphic and abstract in this case, there's one person and almost like a double set of, of another form behind them. So what do you do when you've just doodled on a piece like that? How, how do we make that into a beautiful piece of artwork? I'm, uh, let me just set this aside here for a second while I grab some paint, um, because I was going to start with this piece, but now I'm working on this little one on my hand, in my hand. So this is where your, your key card for hotel or your your, spun, or your um, uh, rubber tools have come in handy uh, or would come in handy. You can work with small brushes or you can work with large ones. And do let me know if you can hear okay, would you folks? Excuse me, if you have any comments to make, please make them so that I can try to, uh, you know, that I can try to uh, gear things towards you. Or if you're really struggling this week, even you know what, let us know. Someone else in the feed might have a word of encouragement for you. Here's what I know. I, I speak blessing a lot to people, and that might be foreign. Um, that might be a foreign concept to many people. But even if you even if you don't believe in prayer, per se, or meditation, just speaking words of blessing can be, you know, just what someone needs in their life to bring them hope and strength and encouragement. And yes, I'm going to get my handy dandy pliers out to pull my my tube, my lid off, manganese blue. I'm just gonna start with manganese blue. And I haven't even washed off this small canvas. I'm not gonna worry about washing it off. I'm just gonna let the charcoal itself move around and settle onto the canvas. And I'm also going to take, some of you may not have metallics at home, so I don't want to exclude you in that, but you could take, um, you could create any, really use any um, series of colors to create these images. I'm trying a different stool this week as well. Actually, I'm using a kneeling, uh, kneeling chair so that I can be closer to the work and closer to you like a microphone so you can hopefully hear better and for those of you who are on do let me know how the sound is this week because we've changed cameras and I'm trying to give you better better quality sound all right so I'm going to take a paintbrush just my traditional if you like my traditional water and you might be able to see this a bit better this week um, what I'll do is I'm going to swap out this canvas so I can actually paint properly in front of you on an easel. I'm trying to rig up these little systems. This is actually a reverse easel. So that I can 
get you close enough to it to see. Now that's going to be super tiny. There we go. This is our, our super tiny canvas this week. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some, just see how this isn't even, I'm not even um, worrying about the quality of my lines. I'm just getting a rough abstract shape say the person's in here and there are just these massive wings around them. Right, I'll paint the edges a little bit of this so that if I do sell this to someone the edges are, are painted and they can hang it on the wall without any inconvenience um, to themselves. The next color I'm going to get, I'm just going to use my again my rag as a blotter to get the manganese blue. And I'll lay this as a base here if you like for these beautiful wing-like shapes. Again just very traditional shapes of what an angel historically as we've looked at them might look like. Uh, nothing special there's this is you know there's no great skill here for this just a real sense of wanting to speak blessing over this person here who is front and center in this particular painting, if you like. They're just front and center. I'm going to raise this up a little bit so I can paint um, without hitting, there we go, without it worrying about um, paint getting stuck in the trough. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to take my white gesso next. Now this might be a little interesting for you. I'm, I'm probably just going to, you could just use your finger I'll take a small paintbrush, but you could just use your finger. Again, for those of you who don't watch every week, this is just Liquitex uh, gesso. I often use a different kind, but they didn't have it when I was ordering my gesso during the pandemic. The reality is things aren't always as easy to come by as they once were, so just work around it. Work with whatever you can, whatever you have in your hand, right? I'm a big fan of that. What do you have in your hand that you could give away to someone? What do you have in your hand that could bring encouragement to a neighbor or a friend? Right? Just, uh, I'm just putting blocking in color here, right? And in some sense, this is a pretty, there's no neck there yet, right? Pretty, I want to be able to put in a, some sort of a neckline here for this individual. If you don't uh, re recognize someone has a neck, then they, their, um, the shoulders will always be bunched right in, like their their head will be sitting on top of the ball. It won't be at all realistic. All right. And again, I'm just going to take my brush and use this to create a sense of wispy strokes. I think I'll move this person up a little bit on the picture plane. I want them a little higher here. We're pretty small in light of our limitations, right? We're small. Sometimes we can be pretty bowed over too. All right, so let's just let that set up. This is just fun stuff, right? We're just having some fun here. I'm going to gray out some of the background. There we go. And now we'll let that set up while I change gears and I go back. I'm just going to set this over here. All right, so you can muck around and play. Um, huh. I'm going to pick up that larger piece. Oops, sorry, it fell over. We'll go back to it in a minute. I'm going to go back to this one, which is more abstract again. Somehow I have to be able to pick this up. Watch, my head's going to go down now. There we are. Now we have this one back in our picture plane. Hopefully, I don't, well, I might rock it, so I'll put it behind there while it's setting up a little bit. Now in this case, I have old containers of bronze paint that I have used, and I have old containers of uh, gold. 
These are from Stowe. It's a coatings company. Out of they're in the they're all over the world actually. And I've done projects for them wherein I have this leftover paint. You can buy gold paint in a tube, iridescent silver blue. Again, you, most of you who have known me have not seen paintings of mine done with these colors, but more and more as I attempt to capture the surreal nature of the transcendent realm, or trans, as I try to capture transcendence and, and what it looks like for us, I'm just keeping some large, um, using some large abstract blocks of paint here. Almost like these people are wearing robes and I'm, I'm thinking that in a, that's the loud scratching of the of the um, key card on the canvas here. But what I would actually like to show you is how to do some gold leaf. So I'm thinking in future weeks, I will show you how to, to uh, add some gold leaf to what we're doing. So I'm just adding some, I don't know, I feel like a, this is not, just letting the card itself shape this drawing. This is very different from any other styles I've shown you. But often I'll put music on and just really, you know, literally speak blessing over, you know, the nursing home where my sister is, over people's lives, and give them, you know, everything I have in my heart just through speaking words of blessing, meaning I might say, may may you be strengthened in your may you be strengthened for the task at hand may you have hope uh, may you have life and health and may your family be strong as you serve other people those are the kinds of words i might say it is just fun <laughs> joni it is i want to speak life to people see this person looks like a regal warrior almost and i know that we don't all share the same beliefs but wow what a joy just to be part of you i'm just using red oxide and manganese blue to create a sense of depth here and people are real how we portray them can be quite abstract here right People are real and their lives are real. These are our friends, they're family members. Um, and I was mentioning, as I was saying, coming on tonight, I haven't been feeling the greatest this week, but you know what, that's okay. I feel a whole lot better than everyone else. And we're just going to keep going. We, you know, I don't know what you do when you get disheartened. I just, well, one of the things I do is paint or create. I keep going, just keep going making sure that we're reaching out to the people who are around our lives who might be struggling. Sometimes it is fun to show two sides of a face. Um, in this case, I had done some purple earlier. And people's heads are oval, their necks, you know, feel like they're kind of, um, I'm not really showing you in detail here because I don't want you to get all caught up in anatomy. Uh, these are just my people, my people, my people. Oh, I want to speak words of life to. There we go. That's a start. We're getting a good start on this piece. Let's go check and see how our other little piece is doing back here. And there we are. Now, how might I add um, some of that gold with my funky tools to this piece? So I have a cap of gold laid open, and then I know I had another piece of rubber that I was showing you a few minutes ago. And that piece of rubber had, yep, had um, notches in it. You can cut notches in a piece of cardboard if you want to. Um, let me just show you how fun this is. These are just, if you like, fun tools. I'm just going to create this swirl. Now does that not, is that not, didn't that just change that picture for you? It changed it for me. I'm going to try and get those swirls, you know, even more consistent. Now I'm going to take the end of this and smooth off where I had that person emerging. 
But you get the sense that something's happening that's larger than they are. That's what I get the sense of. Putting my rubber tool in the water, I'm going to get my paintbrush now and go back to my gesso. Remember, I love using gesso because it's like butter. Now we have some depth and highlight, so this can be that frontline worker, a friend of mine, friends I don't know, neighbors, people I've never met before. They're working on my behalf. You know what? We don't, we don't know all the details of people's struggles or challenges. Some people have had children during this pandemic, and here they are out there working for you and for me, trying to make a difference of care and love and life. So if I am praying for people, one of the things I learned actually from a church in Port Perry um, called New Song, where I actually have some art right now, I'm just working on setting up a show there, was from a priest, I don't know his name, um, but if someone is watching and they remember his name, he does have a book. See how that's emerging now as a person? We're just playing here. We're playing with shape and color. And yes, I am going a bit darker in my color so that I can get some sense of the background um, behind this person, some sense of this radiating force, if you like, and picking up some of the gold. I'm going to put it along the top just here. Yeah, that's even got dust in it. Wow, welcome to my studio trying to I, I carry I think sometimes I'm going to do a whack load of paintings small things you know so people could afford to buy them and I haven't done it so you know that's part of why I'm working on these small pieces so that I get to use up these canvases I've had and there we go I'm just going to paint the edges again so that this is not I know I know I do things easier than what you might do them but I'm just trying to, what I call, give her. Just give her. Um, so, okay, so back to this minister who I heard speak one time. He, this is how he blesses people. He just says, oh, may, they, may you be blessed with everything you know you need from God and everything you do not yet know you need. I thought that was extraordinary. I have another Jewish friend who, over the, I, I didn't even know he was doing this, but he would wake up in the night when my family was going through some challenging circumstances. And he would stand up, wake up in the night and say, okay, God, I agree with everything you want to do in Patty and her daughter's lives. And he would go back to sleep. So here this guy wakes up in the night thinking about someone else other than himself. And this is not complicated for him. He just speaks agreement that our lives would be blessed. Okay, do we see this? This is just a frontline worker who we speak blessing over. Sometimes I reach out my hand and I just reach it towards people and I just say, oh God, bless them. Bless them. And again, you may not share my faith, but surely we could bless and speak words of kindness to the grocery store person or, or the bank teller or someone who's showing up every day to be helpful and kind to us. Blessings rather than curses. And curses meaning for me is anything spoken negatively. And sometimes I do that and I have to go, oh man, I mean, my daughters know. They know how difficult I can be um, when I something interrupts what the way I want it to be. All right, so we're gonna stop there. At least for this time right now, we're gonna let that dry. We don't have to push these beyond what they can do for us tonight. You can come back another time and paint, right? We don't have to have this all finished and the work done. I'm just using my small brush on a side angle. I'm actually going to open some neon paint and see, I use, sometimes I use, oh, it looks orange on camera. Um, but um, I use a t-shirt fabric paint sometimes in neons to just get some color punched up. Now, this is pretty goopy. I might need to apply this with a blade. It's pretty old. But again, for, for my purposes, I'm having some fun and I want to punch up some color and some decoration. See how just using my brush on the side now. I don't have the ability to zoom in for you yet, but I'm going, I keep saying every week I'm working on 
better camera angles and more cameras. I still haven't figured it out, but I will, over time, do everything I can to make this a pleasurable experience for you. So here I'm going to go and put some, again, some striations, if you like, just to get some sense of depth and decoration. The other thing I want to show you, it's one of my favorite toys. Sometimes I put them under a silver container, like an old silver butter um, dish for serving, and I'll keep these handy in my, in my um, studio because they're little tubes almost like an icing sugar squirter where I've liquefied some of my gesso and remember you know Naples yellow is one of my favorite paints so after we're done the pink here we're going to go in and I'm going to use those uh, the Naples yellow and the white to just create some patterns like almost like fabric patterns I mentioned Gustav Klimt I just adore his work and I'll tell you a story. Oh, and feel free to write your story, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. When I was a younger woman, I traveled to, to Italy for fun. And I used to just, I would travel on my own, or I would go ahead of my friends traveling and meet them um, as I was traveling. I know, it was kind of seemed crazy at the time, but I just love my independence and the, the joy of just moving around the globe and the privilege of doing so. Just adding some straight gold now and striations to go with my fluorescent punchy color that I have mixed with uh, manganese blue. So here I am in Italy and I went to Rome. That was lovely. Met some people there courtesy of a dear friend of mine her cousins actually and they you know I had some time with them through and ate in their home and that was a blast um, but then I went to just putting in remember I talked to you about having a brush suitable for the size of what you're doing so uh, I mentioned that this is not a brick brush unless I was going this way on a particularly large canvas that was sized for that but this is a good just to create a pattern if you like, on the shoulder garment of this. I'm going to say this is like a, oh, I'm going to call these guys my, my three company of angels. Maybe that's what I'll call them. Because it's almost like they're dressed for regal royal function on my behalf and on the behalf of others. But yes, I have fun thinking about things that way. Again, when I'm trying to encourage my own heart, or trying to encourage yours, I'm not figuring out every detail of my theology or philosophy, as you might call it. I actually realize that I don't paint philosophy. I try to paint theology, so it's a bit challenging for me when I'm wanting to play like this, um, because it's, it's not based in theology. It's based in my joy of in this case, it's not based in strong theology of scripture or historic Hebrew texts or anything. It's just really based in my love of playing and um, it's almost like the back of a head, eh? Front of a head, highlighting. intuitively creating tonight a little bit of a change from what you've seen me do historically I'm just highlighting some of this so here I am I was in Rome and then I went to Florence I arrived in Florence I'm checking into my room and I see this poster on the wall well lo and behold a Gustav Klimt show was on in Firenze in Florence so I literally threw literally ran up the stairs, put my bag in my room. It was a glorious room. It was just wonderful. I was in such a beautiful hotel. It was spectacular. So I ran, I threw my stuff on the ground, and I literally ran all the way 
to where the show was. I didn't want to miss this, what I thought was a miraculous opportunity for me to see a Gustav Klimt show. And the reason I say that is because I was a visual display artist at the time. And I had just put in, I didn't even know who Gustav Klimt was at the time, forgive me, all of my artistic friends, but I didn't know who he was. And I had just put in a visual, a retail display. I used to be a, a visual artist uh, for, a, I feel like a stylist for clothing um, stores and uh, had the privilege of, of creating between here and Toronto and Kingston and whatnot. Anyway, so yeah, there we go. Having some fun. Okay. Now I'll, now I'll start to play with the, uh, those fun tools I have. So here I am, uh, I just felt it was such a miracle for me to be able to be in Florence and lo and behold, if I don't, just checking to see that this is not clogged, I carry large pins with me. These are large stainless steel pins, so they're not going to break in my hand. This doesn't feel like it's working properly. So I might need to take, might need to use my pliers for that as well. See, pliers are a very handy tool. Yeah, so here I had this incredible miracle. I got to see, I was able to see Gustav Klimt's work. And that was my introduction to him, was creating for a retail store a series of clothing pieces that were created from Gustav Klimt's work and then as such I displayed them and then left for um, left to go to Italy on a holiday and lo and behold if I don't have there we are lo and behold if I don't stay at a hotel that has a Gustav Klimt show on at the time his work actually looked more a lot like Van Gogh in his uh, use of light and sunflowers and whatnot. In fact, originally I thought it was, but it was not. Um, yes, there we go. Now there's also little nibs you can get on these that keep them, uh, that allow for the paint to be even tinier. Again, I hope those of you who have, they screw on. These are not expensive. You get three little jars at Curry's Art Supplies. I'm sure Desaires probably has them too. I'm not sure I've seen them at Michael's. Or if you're working internationally, you may have, um, here I am, yes. This is the real creating, there we are. It's coming out. Yes. Now, what can I do with this? Well, I can have some fun, right? Highlighting, creating a sense of, uh, some sense of features. Just the shapes that I had originally put in. See how beautiful that is? Isn't that a blast? I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, I'll, I don't know. I'll try maybe to, I'm not sure I can bring it closer to the camera, but I might be able to. We'll see. I think I just clogged it up by moving it where I did onto the page. I'll try and blow it out. Yes, I will. Maybe I can't. This is so beautiful. These are subtle decorative lines. I actually want to do a very large panel just with this kind of very tiny decoration. It reminds me of painting um, t-shirts back when t-shirt paint was first coming out and we were all creating t-shirts and little undershirt coverings for children and whatnot. I love innovative product lines. That one might need to soak a little bit. So I'm gonna to switch to the white one now. And put that in the bottom of my water container. Or maybe I'll switch to a larger version. You'll be able to see this better now because it will be bigger. And I'm checking it on my sleeve first, or my sleeve, my, my glove. That's one of the good reasons to have gloves. So these will be larger shapes now.
Just reinforcing my vertical lines. Still abstracted. Yes, I really do have this much fun in my studio. I have this one over here. We haven't even gotten there. This is actually, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve, like fourteen, fifteen different frontline workers in this, and it, the shapes on it. All right, again, just sense of using my finger. Whoops. There we go. We're going to go with the bleed wherever it takes us. We're not going to fight it. Right. Well, you won't fight that. We'll just go with it. Now, what I will do, however, is I'm going to use, I'm going to balance it. One, two, three. Balance that off. And I'm going to use some spritzing of water. To let that bleed a bit, right? To encourage it to bleed. Well, then I'm going to take my sculpts or my contoured shape and play with that a bit. You might, again, you, you could use your, your cards for this, your hotel cards, just to get a smoothing. See the transparencies we're creating here? I'll push that in a bit little itty bitty form of a neck, right? Trying to get some sense of a real form here. I don't want to lose, oops, we'll sweep this this way and up. work at smearing some of these other shapes I'd put in. I don't want them to be such hard lines. They're decorative, but they don't need to be um, hard. Right. I feel the need to put a little bit of depth, excuse me again with my head, a little bit of depth behind my rag. I had to pick up my rag from the ground. Now the other thing you can do, see this charcoal? I can also use charcoal. This is just a Generally create a fun piece. I can use charcoal. Even though I don't paint in black, I can go into charcoal and create some depth if I want. The other thing I want to show you is last week we were talking about pastels and I couldn't find one. So I went through my house and I forgot I had loaned them out. So now we're back here with pastels. Right? You can take pastels and you can bring... It's hard to get a dark pastel, but you can bring some depth of color in and do some drawing on this still, right? I know. Very different, very different style from other things I've shown you, which are quite realistic compared to this. Oops, I dropped a piece of chalk. I'm going to just let that sit for a bit. Let's go back to this one. So what do we need to do with this one? Well, I could brighten this up some still. So I believe that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to brighten it up with... I lost my... Or my rag is now below the painting, so I'm just getting a new cloth. Oh, looking to see if I still have enough white. I don't want to go too bright here because... Just get my tube out again, or maybe even my chalk. Just want this to be a bit brighter. The, the facial features, just a sense of highlighting again, right? Just highlights. Some of the movement of this piece.
these ridges have not fully dried, but they've dried somewhat, and I want a sense of light coming behind. Just intuitively what I'd like to see happen. But I need a clean edge there. see me with this almost like striations getting a sense just using color to bring bring those the form forward create depth in the painting I have to remember to keep this on the screen when I'm doing this Okay, so I'm really, I really have enjoyed doing this little one tonight. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to try and show it to you. Just a person with a sense. Right now, it's not finished. I can see those wings behind the person, but I still don't have that finished yet. I'm going to let it set up again. And this one, I feel like it's almost like these three guys are having a conversation. And I'm going to um, use some clear gel, maybe with a hint, well, yeah, maybe just some clear gel, some gloss medium and varnish, this stuff, Liquitex, right, there you go, Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. a bit of color with it so I'm going to go back in and get a little bit more of that speedball t-shirt paint just cleaning my brush getting more of my t-shirt paint this is just this beautiful fluorescent muck I am mixing the fluorescent paint with the red oxide and also um, separately with the magnesium or the um, manganese, sorry, the manganese blue. So I have two, I have a bubble, if you like, of liquid between these two colors. So that when I when I use the when I pick up my ribbed rubber squeegee or whatever we call this, we'll just call it a, a wedge. I'm gonna pick up some gold from off of my lid. And I'm gonna take some of the gel with the pink. Let me just see what we what happens if I I get a I'm just trying to think where best it would go. Just playing with what happens in my own heart when I move the shapes around. How do I feel about it? Does it capture what I'm trying to do in a sense of the ethereal realm that I'm trying to represent? I know, very different again, right? Very different from, oh, the sound is good, Lynn, thank you. I missed that at the beginning there. I'm glad the sound is good because I actually switched to a different computer and using a Yeti mic. So I'm just gonna use this small end Try to get a sense of how massive 
the ethereal realm is behind that we can't see. Now, again, some of you might see things I don't see. That's fine. I just am not one of those people who are blessed to see other. I'm pretty, pretty pragmatic in what I can see in my world, but I do believe that there are there's a power to bless and a power to recognize that our words can bring life to someone even if we're not in the room. And for people who can't be in the room right now with the people they love, because of the realities of the situation we're in around the globe, then let's try to, let's try to use our words for good. Ah, that's cool, Doug. Speak life. Oh, my three guys here. So I stand back now, I sit back and I say, what else do they need? What else would make this work for me? This different style of creating. let that set up a bit. I'm really disappointed that my my little um, metal tip got clogged because I wanted to use that. I hope you're having fun in your practice. I'm just trying to blow out that nib. No matter what we do, some things are just so fine. I can't get them unclogged. It sounds like elephants above my head. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Super fine nib. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, I can just use a pin if I wanted to to create shapes. But I was hoping I could use this. I'm going to see if I can shoot my uh, my uh, spray gun through it. See if there's enough force in that to clean it out. I always have a spray bottle handy. And yes, this is more intuitive creating armies of angels. Blessing, speaking blessing and health and life in the earth. Now, knowing that folks like my sister's nursing home who are in an outbreak, that they need life. And we all do. We all need blessings in life. I think I might have done it. So now I'm going to switch and put that nib onto my white. Thank you for your patience. We're just five minutes away from being finished. We started late because I could not get... I had everything loaded to just come on and then for some reason it sometimes Facebook just doesn't cooperate. Well, any technology sometimes doesn't cooperate. All right, so here I am. I'm testing it on my glove. Did it did it work? Oh, did it work? Oh, it did. Look at that. I have liftoff. Houston, we have liftoff. So I can put some highlights. Just being careful but Somewhat still abstract, yet highlighting this piece, and hopefully it will make it pop a little bit. Looks like I might be picking up some paint underneath. I've got to be careful to always be squeezing it out when I'm moving it around. So I'm just learning, actually. I've started trying to learn about supernatural or angelic realms if you like and because they haven't that hasn't always been a great or strong part of my theology um, some of you might know much more than I do that's cool um, hopefully I will come to know more I'm just going back to this one now Again, highlighting the 
the light. Put a little water on this one and let that see it's fun hey let it set up um, you won't be able to see that same as me but i'm going to take my rubber tool again while it's still wet here and move that tool around it just have a lot of fun Oh, that's working better now. I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of gold. And I'll try to show you before we wrap up here. Just tipping gold into these tops of the wings here, this sense of the earth. And then I'm going to let that dry. So there we go. It's dripping down here, but that's okay. I want you to be able to see this. You know, where are we in the sense of this electric and wild reality? humanity in the midst of there we go I'll let that oops sorry I'm going to let that dry now and then I'll work on it uh, maybe possibly a bit more let's see what we have left to do on this one you know, I might just, we might just be finished with this one. Oh, we're getting some hearts. I don't know where we're getting some hearts, but there we go. That's fun. Thank you. In my um, biblical theology, there are more angels. There's more, if you like, good than there are more angelic presence than there are um, presence of evil. And I know, again, I normally don't talk this way when I'm creating sunsets and sunrises and stuff, but just using my tool to clean this up a bit. It's got lots of depth. I'm not sure it can come through on the screen for you, but there's a lot of depth in this piece that has been created through the layering. So again, layer, let your pieces rest, let them layer in, right, so you can see them. Wow, thank you, whoever is just bombing with hearts tonight. Um, it has been a blast to co-create with you. I had picked up this sponge earlier tonight thinking I would just paint with this sponge, but it's a roller, but they're fun, just another tool. Um, if you're keen to learn about gold leafing, I would love to show you. Oh, thanks, Beth. Um, I would love to show you some how to do some gold leaf work. Right? I'd really like to show you that at another time. And I'm just looking for some pastels actually to add a little bit. This is a very different color, but I'd add a bit more um, definition here. Maybe you know someone who just really needs blessing tonight. And you could speak a good word, just good words of blessing and life to them. Someone who needs health in their whole body. I just, you know, may they be blessed to receive health in their body. And maybe they receive some hard news this week. Maybe they're battling, you know, it's not just COVID people are battling. People are battling for their lives with just routine illness cancers and health issues and challenges so maybe you know someone like that and you could and you could speak life to them thank you Lynn blessings and peace to all of you as you go have a wonderful week and next week yeah I may we'll see I may um, we may do a lighthouse or I may just go back into and um, doing a bit of Doing, showing you how to work on or lay down some gold leaf because once we know how to lay down some gold leaf then we can also do some other um, work 
on top of it. We can do landscapes on top of it. We could do traditional images on top of it. So maybe that's what we'll do together. So if you have access where you can learn, you know, where you can buy some gold leaf at Michael's, even if it's not real, um, just, uh, yeah, let's be a blessing to people. We're blessed so that we can bless others. All right? Peace, love, joy, happiness. May you have everything you know you need from God, and may you have everything you do not yet know you need. But may you have it come to your house this week, and may you experience strength when you had no strength, hope when you had no hope, physical health when you thought you were done. Right? Let's, um, I just speak that blessing over you. Health, of, health to you, health to your family. Be blessed. May you have everything you know you need from God and everything you do not yet know you need. May you have both come to your home this week. All right, take care, everyone, and bye for now. I'm just going to keep uh, creating a little bit on these as I sign off. Have a wonderful evening.